Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Tuesday and the patch notes for patch 12.7 have been posted, which means it's time to go over the top 5 changes on this week's patch. As always, I'll be going through the biggest changes that are going live on this patch and letting you guys know what you're looking forward to in the coming weeks. 12.7 has a, a handful of some really interesting changes that I really want to be able to delve into and talk about a little bit more than I do some of the other changes that I discuss. so let's go ahead and hop into things, uh, starting off with the Pantheon buffs on this patch. Now, while I am excited about these changes, I am a little upset that they don't target solo lane Pantheon as much as they are just generically useful for a Pantheon buff, um, which is a little saddening for me, but I do think that these buffs are in the right place for Pantheon. Especially the Aegis Assault and Grand Starfall changes are going to make him feel a lot more usable than he does currently. I think that these buffs come with a very fair nerf in the, his health regeneration going down, making him a little it a little bit harder for him to recover from bad trades he takes, so Pantheon is less able to just fight you all the time and rely on his base health regeneration to take him back up. Important to note here as well, the Q length is better, but the width has been reduced, which does mean that a point-blank Q needs to be aimed just a little bit more appropriately than it was before. Just tapping the, the button now because they're right on top of you, this is guaranteed to hit, isn't as effective as it was before, but generally this is a power up for Pantheon and in a bunch of places that I'm very happy to see personally. Moving on down to the Rise changes on this patch, which are also going to be accompanied with some nerfs to Winter's Approach. Currently, Rise has a tank build running around with Winter's Approach where he just builds a bunch of mana and he's able to essentially be super tanky while still dealing a bunch of damage because of how he scales with mana. This, These changes here, so Rise, his uh, bonus mana scaling on Overload is very slightly nerfed, though the, and the AP ratio is buffed, and Winter's Approach as well suffered a change where it now gives a little bit less health and costs a little bit more gold. I think these changes are in the right direction, but I don't think they're enough to fully nerf out the build. I do feel like Rise will continue to build Winter's Approach. It'll just make him slightly weaker. And the important thing here is how Riot tune this to make it so that Rise isn't dependent on Winter's Approach. And if they're able to nerf Winter's Approach in a way that makes it weaker for Rise specifically, but still good on the tanks that it's intended for. So we'll have to see how they navigate this uh, potential pitfall in the future. But suffice it to say right now, I don't think this is going to do too much for Rise's potential viability. Speaking of potential viability here, we're talking about the Windy Brothers. They're both receiving buffs on this patch, and I know you guys are always very excited when the Windy Brothers are in the patch notes, especially if it's in the buff category, but they are fairly weak on live, and these buffs are not that big of a deal. The also his base health, I think, is the biggest change for him because it lets him be a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more safe in lane, uh, but the last breath change is essentially irrelevant. Yasuo was already one of those champions that you just had to assume his ultimate is always available, no matter what stage of the lane phase you're in, and this change doesn't do anything except make that more uh, real, and really say that, yeah, Yasuo is always going to have Last Breath available while you're dealing with him, so... I don't really consider these changes to be that much of a buff. Yone as well, his ultimate cooldown only went down at later ranks, meaning that a Yone who's beating you up in lane isn't going to be able to beat you up any harder in lane. All it's going to do is make his scaling a little bit better and his ability to get into fights in the later stages of the game a little bit easier. So I feel like both of these are probably fair changes for these champions that are powers up, but not that big of a deal. So I wouldn't worry about them too much, guys, if you guys were worried about the Windy Bros taking over your games too much more than they already do. Moving on to the number two change here, we're going to be talking about Gwen, right? Specifically call out her pro play uh, prevalence, shall I say, and while they're trying to buff her in a way that doesn't make her viable in pro play, but also makes her more playable on in casual games right now, I have to think these are going to make her better in pro play. The R change in particular, I really feel like this is going to let her play more aggressively with her needlework and just kind of use it to pick good trades as opposed to right now where you kind of have to save that cooldown for, um, you know, key moments. Now you can just kind of use this to bully people with. I, I really feel like that, that change is a huge one for Gwen. The skip and slash buff isn't that big of a deal, but it is a very slight uh, power up for Gwen as well. So I feel like these are very careful buffs, but I do wonder if they're going to be just enough to tip her over the, the edge back into pro play always gets played viability kind of deal. So we'll see where this goes, but hopefully it's not too much of a buff for Gwen. Finally, moving on to the number one change, and you know it, we're going to be talking about Zeri today. Now, Zeri has suffered from a problem that I, th I think has um, plagued Riot for a while, which is trying to get AD carries to really be built around crit. It's the build that makes that gives AD carries the, um, the majority of their counterplay. If you think about it, a late game character who just gets to right click you and do your whole health bar over a couple of seconds is pretty difficult to deal with, and Riot typically balance this around by saying they have to be a six item late game carry in order to actually 
actually have that status, gating them behind these expensive critical strike items is a way for us to do this. And Zeri got to bro break all of that with the unique way in which her kit works, which also gave her some other synergies with items that are slightly unhealthy. Things like being able to proc Tiamat multiple times with a single spell cast, or being able to immediately stack Black Cleaver upon hitting a single Q. As a result, Riot are trying to bind her more heavily towards Critical Strike. That's one of the reasons why Burst Fire only applies once for the cooldown reduction on her E and only gives her a single Lightning Crash stack now when it hits, but it gives you additional cooldown refunds and additional R stacks if it crits now, which I think is a really good way of saying, hey Zeri, build Critical Strike because it's going to give you more power now than your previous sort of on-hit, um, really weird tank Zeri builds are currently giving you. However, even with these changes made to kind of sort of shift up Zeri's build, the fundamental fact of this character is she breaks the game by not having a regular auto attack. And so Riot are basically nerfing her across the board. Uh, literally every single ability that she has is taking nerf, and almost every one of her base stats is taking a nerf here. Her health growth did get buffed up a little bit, so she'll be a little bit more durable than she was before, but generally every single thing about this character got nerfed. I have to hope that this kneecapping will help make Zeri less of an obvious pick, but just because of how unique she is, I do wonder if this is going to be enough. We'll have to keep an eye on it as we move into 12.7. And that is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you all so very much for watching. You'll have to let me know which changes you're most excited for down in the comment section below. I know I'm excited for the Zeri changes personally. I think she has desperately needed some changes to make her less obnoxious to play against, but you guys let me know what you're excited for down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like, and if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I plan to do it every Monday, Friday, and on patch days like today as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you all later.